What's going on, everybody? This is Lag on Lock here, and welcome to week six of the Ole Miss Rebels Dynasty here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. Looking at the ESPN magazine for this week, there's a new leader atop the Heisman list. So, guys, Gibbs, the junior halfback out of Alabama, is currently leading the Heisman watch. He has 85 rushes for 377 yards. He's averaging four yards per carry. He has seven rushing touchdowns, and his longest run was 16 yards. I can't wait to play versus this guy because we face Alabama in week eight. So in the last video, we defeated the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 27-7, giving them their first loss of the season. The players of the game, we have Altmaier, who was 9-15 of 15 for 283 yards and 3 passing touchdowns. For Wake Forest, they have Ellison, who had 12 carries for 113 yards and 1 rushing touchdown. So this weekend, guys, Sean Cooley is coming out to Oxford as we face the Georgia Bulldogs. So as you can see, his parents are looking forward to meeting me this weekend. We plan to show up and show out at home. This is going to be a great game against Georgia. Hope you guys can stick around for that because we're playing against a championship team here. Now we're going to take a look at the top 25 polls. And at number one, we have the USC Trojans. They beat Arizona 28-23. At number two, we have the Tennessee Volunteers. They defeated Marshall, 26-20. At number three, we have the Michigan Wolverines. They beat Wisconsin, 28-21. At number four, we have Miami. They had a bye week. At number five, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes. They beat Penn State, 48-17. At number six, we have the Texas Longhorns, who beat Iowa State, 27-7. At number seven, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide, who beat Arkansas, 38-13. At number 8, we have Virginia Tech, who beat Cincinnati, 32-24. At number 9, we have the Oklahoma Sooners, who beat Mid-Tennessee State, 42-7. At number 10, we have the Georgia Bulldogs, who beat Colorado, 42-24. At number 11, we have the Texas A&M Aggies, who beat Louisiana Tech, 14-10. At number 12, we have UCLA, who beat Washington, 37-17. At number 13, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes, who lost to the fight in Illini 21-17 in an upset. At number 14, we have the Purdue Boilermakers. They lost to Minnesota 27-10. At number 15, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers, who beat Citadel 45-3. At number 16, we have the Virginia Cavaliers, who beat Georgia Tech 31-7. At number 17, we have the LSU Tigers, who lost to Tulane in an upset, losing 24-21. What is going on in the top 25? At number 18, we have the Florida Gators who lost to Kentucky, 31-24. At number 19, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils who beat Cal, 24-17. At number 20, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks who beat FAU, 36-33. At number 21, we have the UTEP Miners who are back in the top 25 after defeating New Mexico, 22-21. At number 22, we have the Clemson Tigers who lost to the Tar Heels, 18-6. A lot of upsets last week. At number 23, we have the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who are now ranked after defeating Houston, 28-3. At number 24, we have the North Carolina Tar Heels, who are now ranked after defeating Clemson, 18-6. And last, we have the Oregon State Beavers, who are now ranked after defeating Idaho, 17-7. Looking at the others receiving votes, we have Colorado, Louisville, Nevada, Michigan State, BYU, Cal, North Carolina State, and Kentucky. And the only teams that were dropped out was number 25, Colorado, number 18, Louisville, number 17, Florida State, and number 22, Boise State. So next up, guys, we're going to take a look at the leaders in each conference. Starting with the SEC, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks. They are 4-0, 2-0 in the conference. But right behind them, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. They are 4-0 as well, 2-0 in the conference. For the Sun Belt, we have the FIU Golden Panthers. They are currently 4-0, 1-0 in conference play. For the WAC Conference, we have the Nevada Wolfpack, who are currently 4-0, 1-0 in conference play. For the ACC, we have the North Carolina Tar Heels. They are 4-0, 2-0 in conference play. In the Big Ten, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes. They are 4-0, 1-0 in conference play. But look here, guys. Michigan, they're right behind them. They are 4-0 as well and 1-0 in conference play. For the Big 12, we have the Texas Longhorns. They are 3-1, 1-0 in conference play. We do have Kansas, who are 4-0, and Oklahoma. They're both 4-0, but the only reason Texas is number one because they have one conference win under their belt. In the Big East, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers. They are 3-1, 1-0 in conference play. For the CUSA, we have the Houston Cougars. They are 3-1, 2-0 in conference play. 
for the independence we have navy army and temple they are all one in three but this is kind of a shock to me because notre dame they haven't won a game yet they're not a bad team on this game but <laughs> the fact that they haven't won a game that's a little bit uh scary to look at for the mac conference we have the huskies of northern illinois they are currently three and one 2-0 in conference play, but Eastern Michigan, they're right behind them. They have the same record. They are 3-1, 2-0 in conference play. So this is a little bit confusing. The Air Force Falcons, they're currently 1-1, 1-0 in conference play, and they're leading the Mountain West. Utah is right behind them. They are 2-2, 1-0 in conference play. But BYU, if they get one conference win, they'll be number one in the Mountain West. And last, we have the Stanford Cardinal lead in the Pac-10. They are 4-0, 2-0 in conference play. So this week, guys, we are playing the number 10 Georgia Bulldogs in our first ranked game of the Dynasty. They are currently 3-1, 0-1 in conference play. In terms of their injured players, they have Van, their center, who's out for three weeks. In their last game, they defeated Colorado 42-24. When it comes to their offensive leaders, they have Bennett, who has 62 completions out of 105 attempts for 1,087 yards. He has 13 touchdowns, and he has thrown three interceptions. Rushing, we have McIntosh, who has 77 attempts for 338 yards. He's averaging four yards per carry. He has four rushing touchdowns, and he's averaging 84 yards per game. Receiving, they have Bowers with 11 receptions for 297 yards. He's averaging 27 yards per catch. He has three receiving touchdowns, and he's averaging 74 yards per game. Defensively, they have Ingram, who's leading in tackles with 20. He's also leading in sacks with five. And then for interceptions, they have Bill with just one. So that's going to do it for the team information for the Georgia Bulldogs. I'll see you guys out there on the field. So here we are guys back at home to take on Stetson Bennett and the Georgia Bulldogs. I've been looking forward to this game all year. It's going to be first and 10 for Ole Miss. We're at the 19 yard line as Altmaier steps back, rolls to the right. He's going to take this one for himself. No one's to the right of him and that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. But hold up guys, we have an injured player on the field. It's William Poole. Looks like he has a concussion there. Hopefully he can make a speedy recovery. It's going to be first and 10 for Ole Miss. We're at the 42-yard uh, line. That was a great run for Altmaier to start this one off. As Altmaier throws this one to Wade, and he makes the catch. Hurdles of a defender. He's heading downfield. He's at the 10, and that's going to be a touchdown for Ole Miss. We strike first against this ranked Georgia team, a 58-yard touchdown pass. Just getting a report back that William Poole has a pinched nerve and he will be able to return in this contest. It's going to be first and 10 for Georgia. Bennett steps back. Throws it across the middle and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Smith was the intended receiver on that play. It's going to be second and 10. Bennett, play action. Throws this one downfield and it's going to be intercepted by Young. What a great pick. But Young appears to have injured his chest on that play. But hopefully he can make a speedy recovery. It's going to be first and 10 for Ole Miss. We're in great field position at the 48-yard line. Altmaier. And it's a broken play. And he's going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of six. Altmaier hands this one to Heath. And Heath gets a gain of about two on that play. It's going to be third and 14. And on third and 14, Altmaier steps back, rolls to the right, looking, throws it to Trigg. 
And that one's going to be an incomplete pass. We're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and 10 for Georgia. And we're just going to report back that Young has a bruised sternum. He's going to be out for one quarter. Bennett steps back. Looking. Fires it downfield to Smith who makes the catch. And that's going to be Georgia's first first down of the game. Bennett, he's doing pretty well so far this year. He has 13 passing touchdowns. First and 10 for Georgia at the 44-yard line. Bennett hands it off to McIntosh. Spin move. And he's finally brought down a gain of one. It's going to be second and nine. Bennett hands this one to McIntosh again. Juke move. And he's brought down a gain of four on that play. It's going to be third and five. Bennett steps back, looking for an open wide receiver, and oh my goodness, he takes a big hit. It's going to be fourth and five, and Georgia, they have decided to go for it. Not a smart move for Georgia. Bennett steps back, throws it to McIntosh, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. They're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and ten for Ole Miss. We're at the 39-yard line. Altmaier hands one to Evans, and he gets brought down at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and ten. Altmaier hands this one to Evans. He has the blockers, and he gets a gain of about six on that play. It's going to be third and four. Altmaier hands this one off to Evans, and he gets just enough to keep the chains moving. It's going to be first and ten at the 49-yard line for Ole Miss. Option play. Pitches it to Evans, and I normally don't use option plays because they always result and a loss or a fumble, but now it's going to be second and 14. Altmaier rolls out of the pocket, throws it downfield to Mingo, who makes the one-handed catch, takes a big hit, but thank goodness he was able to hold on to it. We're at the 32-yard line. Altmaier hands this one to Heath. He's stuck behind the line of scrimmage, but he's able to move forward and get a gain of about three on that play. It's going to be second and seven. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. No, it's a play action fake. We're going to throw it downfield to Trigg, who makes the catch. And he couldn't get into the end zone, taking a big hit. Worst spot at the one yard line. This has been an amazing drive for Ole Miss. Seven plays, 60 yards, and two minutes and 13 seconds. As Evans fights his way forward to get into the end zone on one yard touchdown run. First and 10 for Georgia. This could be the last play of the first quarter. We are up by 14. Bennett hands it off to McIntosh, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage, a one-yard loss, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter with the score. Ole Miss 14, Georgia 0. Second and 11 now for Georgia as we start the second quarter. Surprisingly, we're doing pretty well. Bennett steps back, looking, Stop right and there, he's going to get scout. sacked by Brown on that play. It's going to be third and 16, a five-yard loss. Georgia needs to do better with protecting this quarterback. That's our second sack of the game. Bennett steps back, throws it, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. It was intended for Blaylock. Bennett, he's not having a good game so far. He's one of six. Altmaier steps back, rolls to the left, and he's going to throw this one away. Great decision for Altmaier. It's going to be second and 10. Altmaier hands it off to Evans, and he gets a gain of about three on that play. It's going to be third and seven. Altmaier hands it off to Evans again, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. We're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and 10 for Georgia at the 30-yard line. Bennett, play action. Throws across the middle to Smith, who makes the catch. No one's able to bring him down. Breaks the tackle, and he's finally brought down by Brown, taking a big hit, and now spot the 41-yard line. Direct snap to McIntosh. He's going to run it up the middle, and he gets brought down a gain of six on that play. Second and four. Bennett 
Hands it off to McIntosh, and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and four. Bennett steps back, scanning the field. Throws it to McConkey, who makes a catch, and that's going to be another first down for Georgia. But hold up, guy Stenson Bennett has injured his elbow on that play. Hopefully, he can make a speedy recovery. He took a big hit on that play. Look at this. The blockers were doing their assignment for a while, but Pegas, he just came in and laid the hammer on Stenson Bennett. Now it's going to be first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Stockton, play action. Throws it to Blaylock, and this one's going to be broken up by battle. It's going to be second and 10. Stockton, hands it off to McIntosh. He gets the first down and more. Juke move. And he's brought down inside the 10 as Georgia used their first timeout. And we're just going to report back that Bennett has a bruised elbow. He's going to be out for the rest of the game. This is going to be a huge loss for Georgia. Stockton looking, fires it, and nearly intercepted. It's going to be second and goal. Stockton, play action. Fires it towards the end zone, and this one's going to be intercepted by Young. A terrible play call for Georgia. They should have just ran it. All he needed was nine yards. And just like that, this one is going the other way. This is going to be a long game for Georgia without Bennett because Stockton, he's a 78 overall. Bennett, he's around the 90s. It's going to be first and 10 for Ole Miss. We're at the 20-yard line. Altmeyer hands it off to Evans, and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and 10. Altmeyer steps back. Throws it to Wade, who makes the catch, and he steps out of bounds. First down, Ole Miss, a 17-yard gain. Altmeyer hands it off to Heath, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A one-yard loss is going to be second and 11. Altmeyer option play. Pitches it to Evans. Juke move, and he gets a gain of 10 on that play. It's going to be third and one. Great run for Zach Evans. Altmeyer hands it off to Heath, and he breaks free. I don't know what happened there, but we get the first down and more. And now we're at the 32-yard line as we use our first timeout. Altmeyer hands it off to Evans. Spin move, breaks a tackle, and he breaks free as well. He said, hey, if Heath can do it, I can too. So that's going to be another first down for Ole Miss. We're at the 6-yard line. Altmeyer hands it off to Evans. He's going to fight forward and gets a gain of two as we use our second timeout. Altmeyer tries to hand it off to Evans, but he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage, a four yard loss, as we get set to kick this 25 yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Nine plays, 72 yards for Ole Miss on that drive. Heath and Evans were the key components in helping us score before halftime. As we head into the locker room with the score, Ole Miss 17, Georgia 0. First and 10 for Georgia as we start the second half of play. They need to come up with a better game plan because Bennett, he's out for the rest of the game, so Stockton needs to step it up as he throws it across the middle to McConkey and he gets a first down on that play. Stockton, play action. Throws it downfield to Milton who makes the catch and he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. And so far, defensive pressure on this quarterback is seven hurries and two interceptions. I normally don't blitz on this game, but we're facing Georgia, so I want to force the quarterback to make bad passes. As you can see there, Stockton tried to throw it to Smith, and that was an incomplete pass. Now it's going to be third and ten. Stockton steps back, throws it downfield, and this one's going to be overthrown. They're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and ten for Ole Miss. Altmeyer steps back, rolls to the right. 
Throws it to Mingo, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Mingo has earned an impact star. So I thought it would go to Wade, but, you know, Mingo and Wade, they're both great wide receivers. As we hand this one off to Heath, he gets tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and ten. Altmaier steps back. Throws across the middle to Robinson, who makes the catch, and that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. We're at the 47-yard line. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He's going to run to the left, and he gets a gain of about nine. He's having a great game, 12 attempts, 57 yards, and one rushing touchdown. Altmaier hands it off to Evans again. Spin move. Trying to get the first down. Did he get it? Yes, he did. It's going to be first down for Ole Miss. That is our 10th first down of the game. Altmaier hands it off to Evans again. Keep feeding this man the ball, and amazing things will happen as he gets nine yards on that play. Second and one now for Ole Miss. Altmaier steps back, rolls to the right, scanning the field, throws it to Mingo in a tight window, breaks the safety, and that's going to be a touchdown for Ole Miss. I didn't think this game would turn out this way. We're up by 24 points against this ranked Georgia team. I know we're at home and I know Bennett is out, but you would think they would play a little bit better. Oh. As Stockton throws an incomplete pass, it's going to be second and 10. Stockton steps back, throws it to McIntosh, who makes the catch, but I don't know why he caught it because that's a two yard loss. It's going to be third and 12. And on third and 12, Stockton throws it, and this one's going to hit the turf. A terrible pass for Stockton. They're going to go three and out. It's going to be first and 10 for Ole Miss. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He's trying to move forward, but he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A two-yard loss. It's going to be second and 12. Altmaier play action. He's going to run off to the right, trying to find a man open. And this one's going to be an incomplete pass. Thank goodness it wasn't a fumble. It's going to be third and 12. We're currently three of five on third down conversions. Altmaier looking. Throws it to Wade who makes the catch. Takes a big hit and that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Altmaier hands it off to Evans and he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and 10. Altmaier hands it off to Evans on a counter play. He's going to get the first down and more spin move, and he's finally brought down a gain of 17 on that play. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter with the score. Ole Miss 24, Georgia 0. First and 10 for Ole Miss as we start the fourth quarter. We're at the 24-yard line. Altmaier hands it off to Heath, and Heath gets laid out on that play. It's going to be second and nine and one-yard gain. Altmaier hands this one to Evans. Noah's it's a play-action fake, and he's going to get sacked on that play. An eight-yard loss. It's going to be third and 17. We're currently four of six on third down conversions. Altmaier hands it off to Evans. He's going to run up the middle. Juke move, and he can't get past the defender. It's going to be fourth and five as we get set to kick this 36-yard field goal attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Nine plays, 36 yards for Ole Miss on that drive. Stockton steps back, throws it to Smith, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. But hold up, guys. There is a flag down the field. And it's going to be offsides on Robinson. A five-yard penalty is going to be first and five for Georgia. Stockton steps back. And he's going to take a big hit on that play. Man, I feel so sorry for Georgia because they have to deal with this quarterback who's inexperienced by the looks of it. And it's going to be second and five. As Stockton hands it up to McIntosh. He's trying to break forward. And he gets a gain of one. It's going to be third and four. 
They are currently one of five on third down conversions. Stockton, he's gonna take this one for himself and he gets a gain of two, but it's not enough to get the first down. They're gonna go three and out. It's gonna be first and 10 for Ole Miss. Altmeyer, option play. He's gonna take it for himself and he gets a gain of eight. It's gonna be second and two. And on second and two, Altmeyer hands it off to Evans. And he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and three. We are currently four of seven on third down conversions. Altmeyer hands this one to Evans. He's going to run up the middle. Excellent blocking up front. And that's going to be a first down for Ole Miss. Zach Evans cannot be stopped today. And that's pretty much going to do it, guys, as we defeat the number 10 Georgia Bulldogs 27-0. Just like that, that's conference win number two of the season. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the player of the game. We have number seven, Luke Altmeyer, the sophomore quarterback. He was seven of 11 for 191 yards, two passing touchdowns, six carries for 11 yards. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. So that's going to do it for the ball game, guys. We defeated the Georgia Bulldogs 27-0 at home. I feel sorry for Georgia because this was supposed to be a close game, a close SEC matchup, but Bennett got hurt early in the first half, and you know, that pretty much cost him the game. We had 14 first downs, Georgia had five. Total offense, we had 333, Georgia had 105. We ran the ball the majority of this game. We had 35 rushes for 142 yards. Georgia had nine rushes for 24 yards. Through the air, we had seven completions out of 11 attempts and scored two touchdowns. Georgia had seven completions out of 22 attempts. We had 191 passing yards, Georgia had 81. We were five of nine on third down conversions, Georgia was one of seven. We were in the red zone three times, scoring one touchdown and making two field goals. Georgia was in the red zone once, but they couldn't get anything out of it. We had zero turnovers in this game. Georgia had two. They threw two picks. Total yards, we had 370. Georgia had 189. In time of possession, we had 1342. Georgia had 618. Looking at individual stats, Luke Altmeyer had a great game. He had a 269 QB rating. He had seven completions out of 11 attempts for 191 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and a 63 completion percentage. Zach Evans had 102 yards on the ground today, averaging four yards per carry, and he had one rushing touchdown. Wade had three receptions today for 91 yards. Mingo had two receptions for 49. Robinson had one reception for 23. And Michael Trigg had one reception for 28 yards. Dayton, Wade, and Mingo were the only players to score a receiving touchdown today. Defensively, Coleman and Brown led our team in tackles with four. Coleman, Brown, and Pegas led our team in tackles for loss with one. Brown recorded a sack. Young had two interceptions. And Jonathan Cruz made two field goals today out of two attempts going 100% and his longest kick was a 36 yard field goal. Now we're gonna take a look at the NCAA players of the week for week six. On offense, we have number 12, Borten Schlar, the senior redshirt quarterback out of FIU as they defeated Arkansas State 28-24. He was 22 of 32 for 376 yards and four touchdowns. Defensively, we have number 89, Mecca Skill, the junior middle linebacker from New Mexico State as they defeated UTEM 31-27. He had eight tackles, four of those tackles being for loss, a sack, two interceptions, and a fumble recovery. Now we're going to take a look at the SEC Players of the Week for Week 6. On offense, we have number 9, Bryce Young, the junior quarterback out of Alabama, as they defeated Florida 41-10. He was 12 of 20 for 214 yards and four touchdowns. Defensively, we have number 6, Pickens, the senior defensive tackle from South Carolina, as they defeated Auburn 28-25. He had seven tackles, four of those tackles being for loss, two sacks, and a fumble recovery. In the next video, guys, we're going to continue conference play against the Vanderbilt Commodores, who are currently 1-4. They have a B-minus overall, a C offense, and a B defense. So that's pretty much going to do it for this one, guys. If you like what you see and you would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.